achieve factorial bliss with a balanced train station. All aboard the factorial train! I'm going to test your mental coordination with a little sit down! In the comments section of the last Combinator Classroom video, Ray Gu asked about how to set up a train station using combinators to shut down the station, forcing the train to go to the next stop, giving the output a more even average. Well, as luck would have it, with the release of 0.13, we can now turn rail signals on and off using combinators and the circuit network. Here, I've set up a fairly simple train layout with five key parts. A train station that will fill the trains with iron ore, a train stacker to hold trains waiting to enter the offload, the offload, which consists of four individual train stations, the individual train stations themselves, and lastly, five trains that will be running iron ore back and forth. <coughs> now this is super important. Make sure when setting up the individual train stations, all the train stops have the exact same name. Here's the overarching theory behind how this balanced train station is supposed to work. The trains will remain in the train stacker if the offload is full. Once we hit the low quantity condition in the offload, the trains will begin making deliveries. Once the trains start delivering, the individual stations in the offload will be open for delivery if they are below the average quantity for the station. The individual stations will close for delivery once they are filled to a certain specified level. Sounds pretty simple. Well, I'll let you decide, Lauren. A train stacker is a holding area for trains so they don't clog up your main rail line as they wait to enter a station. It's simply a group of parallel train lines that are at least as long as the trains that will be entering your station. Here we can see that any one of my five trains operating in this layout can sleep nice and comfy right here without backing up onto the main line. It's important to note that when setting up a train stacker, the only way into your station is through the stacker itself, or it just ain't gonna work. Also, we'll place an additional rail signal at the exit of the train stacker, which will be used to keep the trains in the stacker until we need them. Quick note, make sure you have at least one train length of space between this rail signal and the next, or again, you're gonna run into problems. Ain't nobody got time for that. We're going to turn this rail signal on and off with an SR latch, just like the one we used to control the steam generation in the last Combinator Classroom video. But instead of using accumulator charge levels to determine when the latch sets and resets, we're going to use the total quantity of iron ore in the offload. Let's set up this SR latch. Place down a decider and arithmetic combinator next to the stacker output rail signal. Next, click on the decider combinator and set it so that if iron ore is greater than 8,000, output a red signal with a value of 1. This iron ore quantity of 8,000 represents our offload full quantity condition. Connect the decider's output to the train stacker exit rail signal. This red signal with a value of 1 will close the rail signal if we have over 8,000 iron ore in the offload. Once connected, click on the rail signal and set it like this. Mode of operation is set to close signal, deselect read signal, the closed condition is set to red signal greater than zero. Simply put, whenever this rail signal receives a red signal, it will close preventing any trains from passing by, essentially locking the trains into the stacker. Now, let's set the conditions for the arithmetic combinator. Set it to multiply the input red signal by 6,000 and output that value as an iron ore signal. An iron ore quantity of 6,000 represents the spread between the offload full condition and the offload low condition. To finish up the SR latch, connect a red wire from the output of the decider combinator to the input of the arithmetic combinator. 
then connect another red wire from the output of the arithmetic combinator to the input of the decider combinator. So far, so good. Now let's take a look at the total iron ore quantity in the offload. First, connect all the chests in the station with the green wire. Lay down an arithmetic combinator and then connect the green wire from the chest to its input. Set up the arithmetic combinator to multiply iron ore by one. This arithmetic combinator acts as an input isolator that separates the amount of iron ore in the station from the total amount of iron ore held in the entire offload. Use a green wire to connect the output of this input isolator to the medium power poles. All the medium power poles will be connected with a green wire. And all four stations get set up the same way. Now run this green wire from these medium power poles to the input of the decider combinator located at the train stacker SR latch. This green wire holds the total amount of iron ore for all four train stations. If you're unsure about how red and green wires perform summations, be sure to check out my red and green wire tutorial. I'll leave a link in the description below. Well, this part was simple enough. So let's go ahead and get complicated. Here, we're going to place down an arithmetic combinator that will be used to take the average of all the stations in the offload. Set up the arithmetic combinator to divide iron ore by negative four. Output is set to iron ore. We're dividing by four because we have four stations. If you're playing along at home, divide by the number of stations you want to control. We're using a negative so that the negative average can be added to the positive quantity at each station. Unfortunately, we need to add a little more complication here in order to make the offload run more efficiently. Place down two more arithmetic combinators, one here and one here, a decider combinator here, and a constant combinator here. We haven't yet discussed constant combinators in this series, but fortunately, they are the easiest to understand of all the combinators. Constant combinators do one thing and one thing only. They output a constant signal. In our setup, I'm gonna set this constant combinator to output a constant signal of 2000 iron ore. And that's basically it. For all eternity, this constant combinator will only output a signal of 2000 iron ore. A couple of additional side notes concerning the constant combinator. Obviously, we have more room in this combinator than just one type of signal. We can have a constant combinator output up to 15 signals all at the same time. Also, with the release of 0.13, constant combinators come with an on-off switch, which can come in very handy in some situations. But we will set it to on for this build. Now let's set up these other combinators. Set the first arithmetic to iron ore, divide by 10 with an output of iron ore. For this other arithmetic, set it to multiply iron ore by negative one with output set to green signal. This decider combinator is set so that if green signal is less than zero, output green signal. Now let's wire this thing up. First, run a green wire from the medium power poles to the input of the arithmetic that is dividing by four. Then. Run another green wire from its output to the input of the arithmetic that is outputting the green signal. Next, run a red wire from the constant combinator to the input of the green signal arithmetic and also to the arithmetic that is dividing by 10. Run a green wire from the dividing by 10 arithmetic to the input of the green signal arithmetic. Now run a red wire from the green signal arithmetic to the input of this decider. Lastly, run a red wire from the output of the decider to the output of the divide by four arithmetic, and then to the medium power poles. Extend this red wire along all the medium power poles, leading it back to each of the individual stations. Now let's see how we're planning to use the two signals on this red wire. To perform the calculation that will determine whether or not the individual station is above or below average, what we're going to do is create an SR latch for each individual station. The idea here is that if a station is open for delivery, 
we would like to keep the train offloading at the station until the station is full. This will allow full cargo wagons to completely empty if necessary. So first, we're going to stack up three combinators, an arithmetic, a decider, and a second arithmetic combinator. This first arithmetic combinator will act as another input isolator, just like this other one. Set this combinator to multiply iron ore by one and output iron ore. Connect a red wire from the medium power pole to the input of this arithmetic. Using another red wire, connect the output to the input of this decider. This decider and second arithmetic combinator are going to be the SR latch for the station that will determine whether or not the station is open or closed. Set the decider to iron ore less than one and output red signal with a value of one. For the arithmetic, set it to multiply red signal by green signal with an output of iron ore. Run a green wire from the output of the decider to the input of the second arithmetic along with a red wire from the medium power poles. Run a red wire from the output of this arithmetic to the input of the decider. Also, run a green wire from the input of this arithmetic to the input of the decider combinator. This essentially finishes up the SR latch for each station. The only thing left to do is place down another decider combinator which will invert the red signal that's being outputted by the SR latch. What happens is that if there is a red signal with a value of one at its input, this inverter decider will output no signal, or a red signal with a value of zero if you prefer, and vice versa, no signal in, a red signal with a value of one out. Set this decider to red signal equal to zero and output red signal with a value of one. The output of this signal inverter will then be used to control when this station is open and closed. To finish up this build, first we're going to run a red wire from this signal inverter decider combinator to the train stop. Once the red wire is connected, click on the train stop to open its GUI and ensure that the send to train option is selected in the mode of operation window. This should happen automatically when you connect the red wire, but just in case, it's good to double check. Next, run a red wire from the train station over to the rail signal that will be used to determine if this individual station is open or closed for deliveries. Left click on the rail signal and set its circuit condition just as we did for the train stack or rail signal. Set mode of operation to close signal, then set the close condition to red signal greater than zero. So basically, if we get a red signal equal to one coming into this rail signal, the signal will turn red, which will prevent any trains from entering. Consequently, because the station is closed, the next train will have to choose the next available open station. Well, that essentially completes the building of the balanced train station. The only thing left to do is program the trains themselves. I like to program my trains to wait until full cargo inventory when at the mining location. I figure, there is no point in having empty trains running around. When servicing the offload, I program the trains with the following two wait until conditions. The first is wait until empty cargo inventory. My rationale is that there's no point in having an empty train sitting at an offload station where it can be back out on the tracks making another pickup. The second condition is to have the train wait until the individual station is full. Without this condition, the train would sit here until empty, which may overload one of the stations. The whole idea of this layout is that we want our trains to be delivering the loads evenly among the stations. Having one station completely full while another is empty is not what we're looking for. So the second condition is set as follows. Click the plus sign next to the wait until box, which opens the add wait condition GUI. Select certain condition, click on the and or button to change compare to or, then at the bottom of the train interface, select red signal greater than zero. This circuit condition is transmitted to the train via the train stop once a train has pulled into the station, which is why we connected the decider combinator to the train stop with a red wire. In effect, we can use any signal that can be used on the circuit network to control how long a train will remain at the train stop. Pretty neat, huh? 
Okay, so now with both of these wait until conditions set, we are telling the train to remain in the offload station until either the train is completely empty or until the station is full. So now, if we have everything set up correctly, this train layout should be running as follows. The train stacker rail signal will open when the offload reaches the low quantity condition of 2000 iron ore. The trains will pull in and keep offloading at the individual train station until they're empty or the station has 2200 or more iron ore. Once a station hits 2200 iron ore, it will close and remain closed until the station falls below the average for the offload. The trains will continue servicing the open stations in the offload until the total amount of iron ore in the offload reaches 8000. At that point, the entire offload closes by turning off the train stacker output rail signal. Now, here's the cliff notes on how to customize this setup for your factory. There are three things you need to consider. The number of cargo wagons you are going to use per train, the number of train stations you are going to include in the offload, and the stack size for the item that will be handled by the trains. Once that's determined, you can now calculate these four items. Ideal number of trains to service the offload. Now you could use any number of trains with this design, but I found that having one more train than the number of train stations you have in the offload seems to work really well. So in my build, since I used four train stations in the offload, I used five trains to service them. If you wanted only two train stations in your offload, I recommend going with at least three trains. Offload full quantity condition. This is calculated by multiplying the number of cargo wagons per train by the number of stations in the offload by item stack size and then multiplying by 40. In my case, since I only have one cargo wagon per train, four stations in my offload, and iron ore has a stack size of 50, 1 times 4 times 50 times 40 equals 8,000. If you only have two wagons per train, three stations in the offload, and your trains are carrying iron plate, for example, that has a stack size of 100, the full quantity will be 2 times 3 times 100 times 40, which will equal 24,000. Offload low quantity condition. This value is the number of items that can be carried in one train. In my case, that is 2,000. That is calculated by one wagon per train times 50 items stack size times 40. If you have three wagons per train and you're hauling iron plate, Multiply 3 times 100 times 40 equals the low quantity of 12,000. Train Stacker SR Latch Bias. This is simply the difference between your full quantity and the low quantity. Now here's where you're going to stick those numbers. The full quantity condition goes into the decider combinator located at the Train Stacker SR Latch. The Train Stacker SR Latch Bias goes into the Arithmetic Combinator and the low quantity condition goes into the constant combinator right over here. Uh, I don't get it. Well, Lawrence, unfortunately, that's gonna have to do it for this episode of Combinator Classroom. We're gonna have to wait until part two of this video before we're able to dig down deep into what exactly is going on in all these combinators. But this video gives you more than enough ammunition to start messing around with this build on your own. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. You also can stop by one of my live streams where I've implemented this balanced train station on a much larger scale, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, I know I did, then hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date on all this factorial goodness. But no matter what you do, make sure you get out there, start experimenting, and take control of your factory. We'll see you next time. Be good.